How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, aka Dr. Calcagno, and I am currently a first year family medicine resident working in Canada. Now, every year on the channel, I think this is actually the third time that we're going to be doing it now, we look at the CARMS match data, the most recent match data for medical students that graduated and then went on to get into the different specialties. And in this video, we're going to go over things like the most competitive medical specialties to match into, which did change once again this year, the least competitive medical specialties to get into, and then finally, why I think the Canadian medical system is in jeopardy right now and the future of it if we don't fix this current problem is going to be very unsteady I honestly don't know what could possibly be done about this but if we don't fix it and if we don't understand this data properly I, I just don't see how it's going to work. Now, another really interesting thing about this most recent match cycle is that I actually participated in this match. So I do have a little bit of inside information and what my friends were telling me as they went through it in terms of relative competition and whatever. But in the meantime, if you do enjoy this content, feel free to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if you have any questions at all. And this video is unsponsored. I do a lot of these videos unsponsored. So if any of you want to support the channel in the future, you'll notice that this shirt is brand new. I'm making this limited time drop. It'll be the first shirt. And I'll just show it off a little bit and hopefully a line of medical inspired streetwear. Uh, the motto for this one is be different and it's actually based on situs inversus. So this is an anatomical heart that is flipped to the other side, just like in the situs inversus condition. The shirts are gonna be made to order. So if you wanna learn more, if you wanna sign up for one in the future, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I will have some sort of newsletter out in the next week or two explaining the details on how much they're gonna be. But my goal is to make them affordable so whoever wants one can get one. So to start things off, we'll take a look at an overview of the entire match process. A link to this entire presentation is going to be in the description below because they do go over or just pages and pages of data. If you want more information than what's covered in this video, please go ahead and check it out. But basically for this last cycle, for the Canadian medical graduates, we had almost 3000 applicants, 2,995 that applied. Uh, out of that number, 29 didn't make it through the entire application system. And there are things like deadlines and need your reference letters on time. So if anywhere throughout that cycle, you don't meet all of the specific deadlines, you have to drop out of the application. So when you factor that process in for each of the three different categories, you see that in total, there were 2,953 Canadian medical graduate applicants. There were 19 American students that applied to the Canadian system and 1,322 international medical graduates looking to get into residency here. Now, the way that the residency match works here in Canada is that there are two iterations, the first and the second. You apply to the first iteration of the match, you make your rank list, and then on April 12, I believe, of this year was the day that we found out whether or not we had matched in the first iteration. Now, if you don't match in the first cycle, you then get to apply again in the second cycle, but your choice are only limited to whatever spaces are left open after that first cycle. So you go through a list and maybe there was a spot at this particular school for this particular program. Well, that's something that you could apply to and the same for another part of the country. And that second iteration does tend to be a little bit more stressful from some of my friends that I spoke with. Now, when you do the math for the first and second iteration for the Canadian students, what you'll see is that the match rate this year was about 97.3%, which is in keeping with the match rate that's been going for at least the last few years that I've been taking a look at the data. I think as far back as 2016, when I did the math there, it was about 97.2% in that cycle. There really has not been much of a change in terms of decreasing match rates for Canadian students. When you look at the American students and the IMGs, the rates do tend to be a little bit lower and I'll have those numbers up on the screen right now. One thing that I do want to say though, is that when you look at the IMG match results or the match rate, it does tend to be very, very low when you look at the entire number. However, what you'll see is that the majority of IMG students that do go unmatched have completed medical school a number of years ago, three plus years ago, if you actually read some of the data in this presentation here. Now, one of the things that everyone's always really excited to see is what the most competitive specialties were to match in any particular year. And this year was definitely interesting. We had a big flip-flop from one of the specialties from last year. We'll start off looking at the list from last year. And what you can see from our top five is that last year we had head and neck surgery, dermatology, ophthalmology, emergency medicine, and plastic surgery. If you go to this year though, our top five were plastic surgery, vascular surgery, ophthalmology, dermatology, and the pediatrics clinical investigator program. Side note, there was only one spot for that program in the entire country. 
and I'm pretty sure I went to one of my buddies from medical school. I, I think it was a math student. So some of these programs actually are very, very competitive to get into. Now, every year, a few people ask me what makes a particular program competitive and how do you become more competitive at applying? And it's, it's different here in Canada. I will redirect you to a previous video that I made going over my own residency application. But basically, we're looked at a little bit different than they do things down in the States. Because down in the States, board scores are very, very important when you apply for residency. And oftentimes, the score that you need to apply to a certain residency gets factored in when determining what the most competitive specialty is. But here, that's not really the case. And the way that we determine what the most competitive programs are is by looking at the number of seats that are available for the program and then the number of people that want to get into that program. In order for you to be a more competitive applicant, you have to fix all the different parts of your application. That's things like research papers, things like the re letters of reference that you're getting and where you did your electives. So as far as we can see here, these are the most competitive specialties for this last cycle. Now, on the other hand, we could also take a look at the least competitive medical specialties in the country. These are programs where the number of seats were way in excess of the number of applicants applying to it. Our top five for the least competitive medical specialties in Canada in the last year were hematological pathology, general pathology, neuropathology, medical microbiology, and anatomical pathology. When we look at the very least competitive with hematological pathology, there were four times as many seats as there were applicants. For every one applicant, you had four programs that you basically were able to choose from in terms of deciding where you wanted to go. And if you are interested in pathology, that is amazing news for you. Now, to get to the big flip-flop that I had mentioned during the most competitive specialties, we have to look at pediatric neurology that just last year was the sixth most competitive residency spot to get into, and this year is now one of the least competitive, where basically every single applicant to pediatric neurology was able to secure a residency spot. You also have to look at neurosurgery, which for the most part tends to be one of the most competitive, or at least historically it was, but now there are more seats than there are people applying for neurosurgery. There are many reasons why this is the case. And I think in the last few years, especially, you are seeing a little bit of a downturn in Canada of the competitiveness of neurosurgery. And let me know in the comment section below why you think that is. Now, one thing that I wanna draw note of here in this particular slide is family medicine being one of the least competitive medical specialties. And there were 1400 available spots around the country. We're in a position now in Canada where we really Really, really need family doctors and the data is showing unfortunately that this is one of the reasons why our healthcare system might be heading for an unfortunate crisis in the future. Now here in Canada at least for the last few years it was not uncommon for people to wait four maybe five hours to see someone in the emergency room and to all of my American relatives they would hear stuff like this and it would really freak them out and they didn't really understand why that was the case. When you look in recent times though that wait time has increased even more so and if you look at the new news recently, it does seem like people are starting to complain more and more about the amount of time that they have to wait in the emergency department. One of the reasons why this might be the case is because of the difficulty to get a family doctor these days. And when you look at the stats for family medicine and the interest in family medicine, as of 2022, that particular field is at an all-time low. When you look back to 2013, about 36% of all medical students were looking to go into family medicine. Now we're about 31%. So a drop of about 5% might seem insignificant, but it's not. It's a really big number to lose that amount of interest in only the last 10 years as our population keeps increasing. And it's one of the reasons why I got into family medicine. I do think that it's very important. And unfortunately, if we don't do something to fix the relative interest of students looking to get into that field, we might be heading towards a really unfortunate situation very, very soon. And now finally, the last part of the data that I want to talk about is specifically for IMGs. And I know as far back as I could remember, I've heard from people that weren't IMGs and then IMGs themselves, that the process of getting back into Canada tends to be very, very competitive. And definitely that's the case. There are limited amounts of seats for IMGs in certain medical specialties. And a lot of times, if you are looking to come back into the country, you do need to start looking at some of the less competitive programs in the majority of cases. But the data might not always show that it is as competitive as it looks at first glance. And when you look at the IMG match results, 
what you'll see is that for the current year graduates from the IMG streams that do meet all of the requirements, there was a 90% match rate in Canada, which all things considered was actually very, very high. What tends to bring the number down though, is when you start looking at previous year graduates, and it seems like for the most part, every previous year with one outlier here, gets a little bit lower in terms of overall match rate. For people that graduated about a year ago before they applied, 57%. For people that graduated two years ago, 40%. And then when you look back at people that graduated more than three years ago in terms of being an IMG student, your match rate is very, very low. It's about 21%. And again, it's multifactorial. There are different reasons why students that have been out of school for three years find it very hard to match into Canada. But unfortunately, it is that number that really drags down the total IMG match rate. Now, in closing, that's all the information that I want to give to you guys during this video that we're talking about today. I do, after looking at this data, really fear for the future of the Canadian healthcare system. After speaking with my own patients now, having been working in residency now for like three weeks at this point, I don't know how we are going to fix this relative shift towards people not wanting to go into family medicine, it seems like in these days. But you guys let me know in the comment section below what you think of the data. Um, are you shocked that the most competitive specialties tended to be even more competitive this year than they have in the past? And what else do you think the data is showing that maybe I missed? You guys let me know. Keep the discussion going. We will see you all in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Everyone take care.